the victorious road to Cologne was first hammered out by RAF bombers by attack after attack, in which more than 32,000 tons of bombs went down. 700 aircraft of Bomber Command, including Canadian and Australian squadrons, added last 3,000 tons to pave the way for the land forces. The Rhine, of all landmarks the most German, is swallowed up in the smoke and turmoil of blanket bombing. From the camera aircraft, we see the death of a Lancaster, which received a direct hit. We press forward through towns and villages, ground between the twin millstones of air bombardment and land artillery. The white flag has replaced the crooked cross of the swastika here in Cavella, as it is doing throughout the Rhineland. Men and machines doggedly, irresistibly ploughing deeper into Germany. Heil Hitler is the German's greeting, the sign says in Mönchengladbach. Well, maybe it was yesterday. The chaos of the refugee, the mark of Cain which Nazism set upon the face of Europe, is felt now in Germany. How alike they are, these towns through which the Allies fought their way to the Rhine. This is Krefeld. There's a hush and an air of suspense in streets and buildings in these first hours after surrender. What life there is seems unreal as a background to the purposeful concentration of the soldiers. Of all these conquered cities of the Rhineland, biggest, proudest and most German of all is Cologne. Heil Hitler! That fellow must have been popular. Cologne Cathedral through the steel tracery of the Hohenzollern Bridge. The Kaiser opened the bridge with pomp in 1911. In 1945, Hitler closed it with dynamite at the insistence of General Hodges' American First Army. Somewhere, there are a hundred thousand civilians in the dead rubble that was Cologne. For the past two years, they've lived 50 feet below the streets. A service cameraman sees the swift execution of a tank. A shell bursts inside it, blowing the gunner through the turret. Dr. Goebbels' handiwork warns, the enemy is listening. On the contrary, we're doing the talking. Even the closest observer might find it hard to pick out houses from streets in this city where 85 to 90 percent of the buildings have been destroyed. This shattering through and over the Rhine at Cologne must bring home to the Germans more forcibly than any blow they have yet sustained the nemesis which has descended on them. Little but the cathedral remains standing. In the wreck and wretchedness of Germany's third largest city is written the epitaph of Hitler's Rhineland.